call ourselves to order here at 7.03 p.m. And first item of business is uh, additions to the agenda. Uh, is there anything that anyone would like to add to the agenda? Not hearing anything, uh, we will move to comment from the public. We have a few members of the staff public who are present with us. Um, I believe we've got Anna, Jillian, and Katie. Uh, members of the public, do you have anything that you would like to comment on? I do not. Nope. All right, sounds good. On that note, then we will move along to the uh, next item, which will be the minutes for the March meeting. Uh, March 15th, 2022, I read through them and I do not have any um, recommended changes that I would make. Um, barring any suggestions or questions, uh, I would look for a motion to approve. Just one, uh, one small detail. My uh, my name's misspelled in the call to order. That's the. Well, we've got to fix that. <laughs> you can't have that. We'll fix That's that. A, just a small e, and then it's done. No. You got it. Okay. All right. So we'll fix that. Any other questions, comments? Hearing none, I would look for a motion to approve. A motion to approve. Uh, I think Matt Bill and I are both at the same time, yeah. You guys tied. Um, Matt, would you like to do the second? All I'll right. Second. Uh, motion from Hayes, second from Zaudi. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? Hearing none, minutes are approved. Hey, Jenny. Hey, Jenny. Hey, Jenny. All right. So then that is going to take us up to the financial reports, for which I am going to share a screen. Is that showing up as halfway on yours too? There yeah, we go. we're getting like section cuts up. Us. There you go. There we go. Try and zoom in here. All right. Uh, so good things to report on the financial reports. Uh, we received uh, 9,221 uh, as our last uh, bit of property tax revenue which takes us up to uh, 1,016,815, which is a little bit more uh, by about 2,300 than we had actually uh, requested for in our property tax levy. Uh, so we are in terms of property tax revenue received at 100.23% uh, for the year which is Eric, a good soft landing space. Right. Eric, is, does that happen very rarely that you actually get more money uh, than, than budget? Or is, I don't remember this in the last few years. No, usually in, in recent years, we've uh, fallen a little short. Um, I would, I, I prefer a thousand over. Yep. Um, I think it's easy to bu easier to budget around uh, that sort of a discrepancy. Is that um, driven by, I was interested in that too, just because just from the anomaly, is that is that driven mm -hmm. presumably by like greater transactions and uh, in the home space and prepayment of taxes or are we just yes. manna from heaven? <laughs> okay. Yeah. So of course the, the way that it the way that the, the levy works out is we ask for a specific amount and then uh, Bettina working with the county then translate that based off of the community's EAV mm -hmm. and um, the entities that and individuals will be paying taxes translates that into a rate that then gets applied to everybody. So, you know, there's pretty much always a discrepancy then between what that rate then gets 
mm-hmm. and uh, what you actually asked for. Um, it's not impossible that it might at some point land onto exactly that number, but it's pretty unlikely. Um, I, I would guess that Bettina probably calculated conservatively last year, um, hedging bets um, more towards the possibility that things might be a little bit more difficult. Uh, there's also the possibility that there was some tax catch up that people were doing um, since we were a little bit short last year. Good problem to have. Yeah. Yeah. Indeed, indeed. So uh, another bit of revenue news, passport fees. Uh, you will note that uh, we ended March at 19278 um, Talking to Anna, who is monitoring the passport um, funds and transactions and Martha, while well, Martha is on leave, uh, Anna reports that we went over $20,000 in passport revenue mid-April. So we are officially over 20K uh, for that uh, budget line uh, for, this, uh, for this fiscal year, which is uh, not only more than, um, quite a bit more than what we had budgeted for to receive uh, the 7,000, but it's also, I think, uh, um, a, a fair bit um, more than we had budgeted for the next fiscal year as well. Hopefully that is a revenue stream that we will be able to uh, continue in, continue with, and that will settle in to be in that vicinity. It's been a good addition. And Eric, what's our budget number for next year? Uh, I wanna say about 16, but I am gonna look it up so that I am absolutely certain. One of the nice things about virtual meetings is you can look things up without too much fuss. All right, where are you here? 15,000. Good, okay. Let's keep our fingers crossed. Eric, can you make the numbers on this any bigger? Ah, great, thank you. A little better? Okay. All right. Yeah, just one quick question there. So, I, I mean, I know this is like a, a couple percentage points of our budget, right? But, um, it, you know, this, this is obviously um, a great addition to our revenue stream. Do we do we have any thoughts, like from a forecast standpoint? I know obviously we budgeted 15 grand for next year. <clears throat> I think a little higher in the, in the follow-on budget is, you know, do we think this is driven at all by like people coming out of, out of the woodwork and that we're seeing a, you know, a front end loaded sort of crush or, or that this is gonna be more evergreen. Um, I, I asked that in the context of, I think it was Aspen Library said their passport revenues are like 70 grand, which I think blew us out of the water when we yeah, hear yeah. that number. Um, so, you know, I, I obviously wanna be conservative, but maybe at the same time, there's, I, I just wanna raise the issue for any thoughts or, or insights we might have. There's probably a little bit there as, as far as people uh, coming out to get their passports, eager to travel, um, or you know, just recognizing that it's a valuable document and it expired and um, they really had to wait uh, to do the renewal while everything was in lockdown. There's definitely some of that. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, it's, it's also worth noting that the fiscal year um, before we went into lockdown, the, we were, doing pretty good, um, you know, bef- in the before times. Um, in 2019, 2020, uh, before we lost the last two months, we were on course to, um, I want to say, finish in the neighborhood of 14 or 15,000. So the, uh, there's a little bit, uh, certainly, of um, extra business. But, you know, just looking back to what the business that we were doing before, um, I'm pretty comfortable saying that this is going to be a, a solid revenue stream. Um, and it, it meets a real need to, uh, there, there's not a lot of easily accessible places for passport, um, issuance right yeah. now. So. Um, sorry, just to jump in really quick. One other thing too, is that I think probably the majority of our passport business has been parents renewing, uh, passports for their kids, um, which have, uh, 
they have a uh, five, the kids' passports are five years um, rather than 10. So I think we're gonna see uh, more turnover with uh, families with younger kids as they come in and their passports renew more or expire more frequently. Yep, good point. And, and, and just to, to elaborate on the, uh, the convenience part, I think that, uh, you know, with the post office you used to have to book appointments well in advance and um, there's, there's, uh, there's definitely a big convenience as more and more people um, uh, learn about, about this. So it's um, all of that all adds up to, I, I kind of agree with you, Eric, it should be a, a steady stream uh, moving forward. Okay. What is the revenue per passport to us? Thirty five dollars. Thirty five. Okay. Um, less uh, the the shipping, of course. Got it. So um, it it should just be noted that the actual revenue varies widely because we get thirty five for application. But let's say we have five applications that are all being mailed to the same place. We only have to buy one shipping label. Um, yeah. So that is why Martha built this huge spreadsheet that tracks the actual final revenue, whereas mm -hmm. the um, budget line is always going to be a little bit different because some of that revenue is associated mm -hmm. with passports and some of it is associated with postage or other fees. It, yeah. It sounds complicated, but Martha built a, a really pretty spreadsheet for us that works it out. Yes. Got it. Um, Thank so you. So $35 minus, um, minus shipping. And if there's any, what, what, are, what would be the additional fees that we would need? To... Additional fee, oh. Um, Sorry, this, I'm not trying to explain this well. Uh, 35 goes into the passport fees line. If there is mm -hmm. an express mailing, it goes to the other fees line, but postage is where we take out the money. So it's not like it's going into passports and then postage is coming out of passports. It's all on no, the- No, there's, yeah, there's separate lines. Right, so in the yeah. spreadsheet is where we put all of that together to give us a true picture of what we are making per passport mm -hmm. um, and all of that. And we're over $20,000 for the year. Yes, yes, we are. Okay. So um, jumping on to the next uh, point here to keep us moving. Uh, we do also, uh, and thank you, Anna, for the, the details there. Uh, we do also have um, another fun item here in our uh, revenues that I can report, which is that we received another Naperville impact fee, um, which as always has absolutely nothing to do with Naperville other than the fact that they pioneered this type of impact fee. Um, but it's another one for the, the flat rate that we received of 2,159. It's two months in a row, I think. That's great. Indeed. Okay, so I'm uh, going to jump down and highlight a uh, couple items here. Well, I think just one in uh, expenses, uh, which is the other professional uh, services. Uh, the 4,810 here reflects a payment towards Engberg Anderson for uh, their design services related to uh, the Stro reading room. And we'll see the checks for that here in a moment. So. Um, hopping down to the bottom line. Um, so revenue versus uh, expenditures. Um, we are um, with a month left and most revenue sources other than things that we receive on a monthly basis like the passport revenue received um, at uh, 106,956. Um, to the positive um, revenue versus expenditure. Uh, I would expect that uh, we'll have about another 70,000 uh, that will have expended in, in April, um, maybe more. So we should be on pace to, as planned, put in 20 to 30,000 um, thereabouts into reserve at the end of the year. 
Good. So uh, those are the financial reports. Does anyone have any other questions related to those? Uh, if you back up to the village contribution, which is I know always late, um, mm -hmm. it looks as though that hasn't been paid yet. Correct. So it usually usually happens during the reconciling process at the end of the year. The end of the so like June. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yep. Um. When we've needed to see it in there sooner, they've been um, happy to put it in, but usually during the reconciling process at the end of the fiscal year has been easiest. So that could be another nine or 10,000 over and above the 106 at the bottom that, um, or the, the net, okay. And does that also affect the school district 65 um, line item there as well? Oh, no, oh that's all. Sorry, I take it back. That's that's already in there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sorry. Other questions? Otherwise, Here, I would real quick. I should know this, but the bleed operating cost contribution of eleven hundred eighty dollars. Is that paid mm -hmm. by Vleet or is that from the village? That's from the Vleet. So that um, is, and how is that calculated and how, does that change? Well, um, the Vleet operating cost contribution um, reflects two things. Um, it's the $10 that they pay in rent. Um, and it's also their reimbursement for janitorial services. Okay. Uh, it's easiest to have one janitorial contract for the full building, um, but, uh, and I have thoroughly checked, we are not under any obligation to provide them that service. So we have a, an agreement in place where uh, they do reimburse us for their portion of the janitorial service, um, which is, I'm gonna say about $45 a month. Um, the, the total came out a bit weird this month, uh, this year, because, um, we had to do a lot of fancy math for the first payment. It ended up being one for, usually we build them twice a year. We build them um, for a full year this last June uh, because things had been so crazy. And there'd been a lot of months where um, over the last year and a half where we just hadn't had any janitorial cleaning going. Um, so kind of had to go back through the bills and really calculate out exactly what their percentage was. But there's no contribution for snow removal or landscape. No, okay. that's what the uh, money from the village is intended to cover. Oh, okay. Good questions. Uh, okay. Any other questions? Hearing none, uh, I would look for a motion to approve. I so move. Motion from Bonnie. Do we have a second? I'll second. Second from Matt. We are looking at funds, so we'll do a roll call vote. Uh, Trustee Meyerhoff. Aye. Trustee Shaw. Aye. Trustee Zaudi. Aye. Trustee Hayes. Aye. Trustee Graziano. Aye. Invoices, not invoices, uh, financial documents are approved. So we'll move on to our checks. <clears throat> and a couple to draw attention to before I open the floor to any questions. Uh, the first one I wanna be sure to call out is this one here to Henkel Electric. Um, we had Henkel Electric out for some uh, work. Specifically, we had a uh, emergency uh, bollard that had died, um, was no longer charging, uh, was just making a really obnoxious ticking sound um, perpetually. So that needed to be fixed before we all went crazy um, and fixed it has been. 
Uh, next, uh, I wanted to draw attention to a check that we cut to the Lake Forest Library. Um, $1,401. And rather than having been made out of the goodness of our hearts to support um, our less fortunate neighbors, uh, that is a our portion of the read between the ravines um, cost. So generally the way that it's worked easiest um, to handle the read between the ravines expenses is for one library or the other. And it's been Lake Forest Library to handle the billing pay the costs and then the other library reimburses uh, once all the billings completed after the event. So Eric, is, um, that, is that split prorated based on population? Um, we have not prorated it based on population in the past. How was it divided in, in the past? 50-50? We've been dividing it 50-50. Our, in terms of attendance, we tend to get more mileage out of it, as much mileage out of it as, as they do. That's fair. I mean, if attendance is typically 50-50, then that's probably fair. Um, we, we, we do good with programming. Uh, so I, I will um, keep the, the question in mind here. Uh, but I think the 50-50 the split is, has been pretty equitable, has worked well. Um, and I would say as well that um, it is worked pretty well uh, in terms of working with Lake Forest on this. Uh, they do work like we do to really keep the, the expenses under control. Um, and usually the, the final tally is, is less than um, either of us either institution had thought it would be so uh, which is which is good because you know anytime that you do a joint initiative like this there's always a possibility that um you know one of the institutions gets a little carried away and starts adding a lot of bells, bells and whistles to, to the event and um that can just become very quickly a source of friction but we haven't had that problem uh but matt i think i interrupted you there no no i was just oh, okay Excuse me, sorry, <laughs> third party. No, no worries. Uh, and then one I in particular really wanna draw attention to is NewsBank. Uh, NewsBank, um, and I believe that, uh, Anna, NewsBank is new, correct? I'm not. Yes, yes, it is um, a new local online newspapers service that we are given a try along with upping our um, national service coverage. Mm -hmm. So the big inclusion with NewsBank is that uh, in addition to the Chicago Sun-Times and Cranes and other local Chicago community uh, papers, uh, in addition to some national ones, uh, with NewsBank, it looks like we're getting um, online digital subscription to the Lake Forester. Yes, that is correct. Um, I am working on, and I, I say this as a, and we'll get back to this as soon as things calm down, I am working on a lib guides to help direct patrons to the digital equivalents of all of our physical newspapers. Um, we are also currently doing a free trial through the same company of the online access to USA Today, um, which does include the I forget what they call it, but basically the version where it looks like you are reading the paper online instead of reading individual articles. Um, so I'm going to work on getting that publicized better just as soon as I get back to only being me and not also being Martha. <laughs> so uh, the online access of Lake Forester is something that we've um, you know, kicked around as, as a possibility at, at times over the years. So very exciting to have that on board. And um, I would also say as well that um, Anna continues to, to do a uh, very good job as the um, new person uh, with our digital collections since she had taken over last fall. So um, much, much credit due, uh, many thanks, Ode. 
Hey, for, for Anna, um, one thing just in walking through the neighborhood, I do tend to notice who, who has what newspaper at the end of their driveway. Um, <laughs> and the Wall Street Journal is one that's pretty common in Lake Bluff and it's really expensive to get the physical paper. So if we- uh, It is part of the national package through ProQuest that we got this year. So, okay. um, yeah. yes, so I, yeah. we got Wall Street Journal, um, New York Times. We already had Chicago Tribune. We upped the package to get the others, uh, Washington Post and LA Times are the five mm -hmm. in, that's not NewsBank, that's ProQuest. Um, we increased that package, I believe in December. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. So just a suggestion that if, as we publicize, just certainly mm -hmm. call out those um, newspapers, all of which the, that you mentioned. And, and again, I think the Wall Street Journal is one of the most expensive dailies to get. Yep. Yes, yeah, it's something I wanna be very loud about um, as soon as I have the time to be loud about it. Are there, is there any limit on the amount of subscribers or patrons that use it daily or is that, is that monitored? Um, so it's similar to our EBSCO databases where someone can go in with their library card, they can search for articles, they can download the full text of articles. Um, as far as I know, there is not a limitation outside of like, we set up the fees based on the service population. Yep. So, and it is, um, our online resources are pretty much always exclusive to Lake Bluff card holders. They usually aren't um, covered in our reciprocal agreements. So it is, we cannot exceed our service population basically. Yeah. yeah. So can a patron um, subscribe to that daily and just automatically find it on their laptop or would they log in and go through the process every day? They'll have to log in. Right now, the majority of online newspapers are not set up like online magazines. So like if you've ever checked out a magazine through Libby, it's like you're reading the magazine basically, right. but on your screen. Yeah. The majority of online um, newspapers are set up with the text of the articles. Um, so it's a little more difficult to browse. They are trying to get more set up like they have USA Today where it is pictures, um, but there is, a lot going on there more than I know. There's a lot of um, overlap in rights and that kind of thing. And like, you need different rights to publish the images online versus in print. And of course the newspapers want people to subscribe to the online portion. Yeah. So they're reluctant to um, give out that access no. for essentially libraries to offer for free. Um, yeah. But we're going to be publicizing it very well uh, in order to try and get people to do that. So um, very, very exciting. And uh, yeah, looking forward to the uh, getting the word out on that. So, OK, uh, last item I want to highlight here is our payment to Stanley, um, which is the company that we bring in when something has gone wrong with our mechanical doors, um, specifically the auto opener portions of them. Uh, in, in this case, the outside um, auto open button at the main entrance uh, gave up the ghost and uh, needed to be fully replaced. So replace it we did since it's a, a life safety question. Um, getting somebody out to take a look at that. We didn't want to leave it down for too long. Any questions on any of the other checks? If not, then we need a motion to approve. And let me give you the numbers for those real quick. So we will be voting to approve. I'm just going to go up here and cheat going to go up to the agenda where I wrote it down, uh, would be a motion to approve checks 15140 and then uh, 15,142 to 15,171. So moved. A second. Motion from Kathy, second from Bill. And another 
uh, financial questions. So we will do a roll call vote. Uh, Trustee Hayes. Aye. Trustee Graziano. Aye. Trustee Shaw. Aye. Trustee Meyerhoff. Aye. Trustee Zaudi. Aye. Checks are approved. And that will take us up to the committee reports. And looking at the list of committees that met, uh, first on the list is the Building and Grounds Committee. And Building and Grounds would be, let's see, uh, Janie, who is not here. Um, I'll jump in and give a real quick update for Building and Grounds. And Kathy, you can supplement me. Um, and Bonnie as well, uh, should I leave anything out. Uh, Building and Grounds had met earlier um, specifically to look at uh, furnishings uh, for the Stroh reading room. Um, having um, the previous month settled on the um, elements for the, the fireplace, um, the, uh, the grate as well as the, um, the tiles that will go over the fireplace, uh, the focus has been on the furniture. We've been talking with Megan Replin uh, who's a representative for uh, LFI, which is Library Furniture International. Um, and she has been sending us out some samples. And actually I did just get a message back from her that she's managed to shake loose a few more samples that should be arriving sometime later this week. So I will keep you posted on that um, so that we can do some more test sitting. So hoping to get um, a better idea as far as what we'll have in the, the room then in terms of the furniture here in the uh, next month or so. Um, other bit of news I would add from Building and Grounds um, is that uh, as we've gotten things signed with uh, the contracts for the work that uh, we are um, getting a better idea as far as when work will start. It sounds right now like it will probably be sometime around the start of June and should last um, about a month. Uh, for installation, and then uh, we will be all up and running. So um, very exciting to see this moving along. Uh, Bonnie, Kathy, anything that you would add building and grounds wise? We did get the renderings. We have a we received a rend yes. two renderings mm -hmm. inside the room and outside the room. I, Bonnie, I don't know if you've seen them yet. I um, did. I did. Um, so yeah. that will be available. Um, Eric, you might want to just send those out to the trustees this week so they can take a look at it. But that will okay. be uh, put into a poster type of display um, announcing the room and, mm -hmm. you know, kind of advertising and hyping it up a little bit. So, and it's yeah. a, it's a reproducible rendering. It was actually donated by our agricultural architectural firm to us so we can use it for marketing and so on and so forth so well, it gives a good idea of what the room will look like i had i had sent the renderings out to the building and grounds committee as well as jillian and melissa would you like me to send it out to the full group yes please will do so just just one quick point of feedback on that um i thought the renderings would be very helpful i did i did find one of the um images like image of a person is sitting on, the, I think, the arm of the chair or something, and looks kind of awkward to me. Her, her I know they don't. Weird. Yes, yes, exactly. Like, okay. So I know that they, they donated them. I don't know if we just accept them as is, you know, don't look a gift horse in the mouth, or if we ask them to. Yeah, that's actually a good point because it's a weird, really. <laughs> I wondered what the heck she yeah. was supposed to be yes. doing. <laughs> and I looked at it from behind and I looked at it from the front again and I was like, oh, okay. I will, I will follow up on that. There's not that much in that room that you would have to strain your neck to uh, take a look at. So, yeah. so Eric, that's I'll a good point. Up. We probably yeah. should follow up on that. I'll follow up with Sean on that. And uh, if it's not too much trouble, I'll have him uh, get that fixed. Yeah. Okay, I think that'll take us then up to the campaign planning committee. Do you want to just jump to old business when we get to that, or do you want to start? Didn't... Oh gosh, there's a, a lot of overlap there with uh, with that and with Melissa's report. So why don't we wait until we get to yeah. old business? Yeah. 
Um, and then uh, we had a joint finance and HR committee meeting, um, which would be, uh, Jenny, I believe that was um, mostly, mostly your show as the finance chair. Oh, um, HR, right, yes. HR chair. Yes, Bill was yeah. there HR. representing, thank right. you. Bill was there representing the finance committee. So thank you, he brought all the numbers. <laughs> So, um, so yes, it was the next step in finalizing Eric's review. Um, so Eric got a lot of positive feedback and um, then we discussed with finance the next steps um, in regards to that process. Bill, would you share a little bit? Was there anything else I missed? No, I think, um, no, we, we went through. We, we, we talked about a couple of things for, for next year in the review process, um, looking at trying to put um, actual um, uh, certain behaviors on there to, to, to uh, look at. And the other thing we, we also talked about would be something, Eric, when we do the budgeting next year, is to look at all the staff in general as far as um, what we want to look at as far as increases and, and things with specific individuals so that we can have a little bit more of a um, exact um, how we want to look at um, all the staff as we go forward, as opposed to putting in a fixed number and then having to um, uh, look at pluses and minuses and in, in some different areas. So that might be something for budgeting next year that, that we would sit down with and, and, and look through that and share that then with the um, HR committee as well. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, and then on that, I think that takes us to, um, well, it, it, it didn't go off as, as, a, as a fully posted meeting because we fell short of a forum, but we, we had a tech meeting um, that still managed to be productive. Um, and then we're going to have a technology uh, committee meeting uh, that we've got scheduled for next week. So um, Matt, did you wanna do a quick update on that? Yeah, I'd be happy to. So um, especially for uh, Jenny and, and uh, Kathy's benefit. Um, um, so we were, we were able to meet, um, we, as we discussed previously, um, we had settled on sort of a, a rubric um, to um, prioritize and capture the different elements or different technologies or different space usage. I mean, we had everything from staff to programming to technology, hardware, software, uh, buildings and grounds, which was a kind of catch-all budget for any space or, or physical plant um, observations we had. Um, and then scoring those um, versus impact, perceived impact on our end and, and, and feasibility, whether that's budget constraint, space constraint, we can't very well go and add a, a 2000 square foot maker space in our, in our current facility. Um, <clears throat> so we at least have a, um, um, a, a, a codified metric to, <clears throat> to advocate these pieces. Um, uh, so our plan is still to, con to continue with that. Ho uh, hopefully on Tuesday, we'll be able to um, solidify that and present it to the board at the, at the next meeting. Um, but that being said, I also wanted to emphasize that um, uh, coming out of these um, uh, this canvas, that there was a lot of enthusiasm individually um, around some of the things that we heard or observed. Um, and um, the staff in particular has been very proactive in, in going ahead and, and trying to capitalize on those. Um, so some of the, we had, we had, we had heard about grants from, um, you know, Best Buy, um, I think it was T-Mobile, some other local companies that were used for express purposes, um, audio video rooms, things of that nature, that would be wonderful for us, you know, five, $10,000 grants to go and buy equipment. Um, so with the, the, the staff has been looking into that, um, um, I don't have my notes in front of me, but I'm at a loss right now. I know there were, um, Anna or Jillian, please back me up here, but I know there were several other, oh, the app, um, we had looked at some of the app technologies that we had heard from other, um, uh, from other libraries. So the kind of consolidating our, um, our list of, of potential candidates there to work with. Um, what else am I missing, team? 
Right, and, and so just, just to provide a little color on that, some libraries have apps where you can check out the materials yourself. Some others have apps where you can book a meeting room for use uh, or a study room uh, via an app. So uh, interesting technology for some groups of patrons. Um, yes, so a uh, quick follow up on the apps where we're at is that the quotes we have gotten were something we'd really need to plan for. Um, to be able to afford that, but we are working a question in regards to interest about a mobile app into our patron satisfaction survey this summer. So we're going to take that data um, where we ask, you know, would you use it? What would you use it for? Can you tell us what features you'd like us to be able, like, like to be able to use in it to help us determine if there's enough interest to make that cost worth it because we do know several libraries a few years back tried to do apps and then ended up kind of eating the money because patrons weren't jumping on board. And we don't know at this point with the pandemic, with the digital switch, where our patrons are at with that. Yeah, and it's a, it's a process too that where in addition to the costs of an, an investment in the app itself, there's um, groundwork that we would need to lay in terms of our um, infrastructure here. Uh, probably the biggest one being that we don't currently use RFID tags uh, for our materials. Um, libraries have been generally moving to make the switch. They make a lot of good things such as self-checkout stations uh, possible. Um, we've not previously had need for those and we've never had any security issues where those would not be more expensive than the items that they would keep in the building. Um, so the, there's not generally been much of a push or a need for those in the past, uh, but we might be looking at some additional factors because I know at least one of the folks that I talked to uh, for, for the app, um, I don't remember which one it was, but they, I told them that we didn't have RFID and they were kind of like, oh, well, I mean. Watching it up. Yeah, you, we're not for you then. Um, like, well, but I, it looks like there's features here that, that could work with for us. So, um, but the, the other couple things too, we'll see, it's, it's good to I'm know sorry. that it's out there and it's good to be able to have it on the horizon. Man. Yeah. I apologize, Eric. I didn't mean to jump over here. Um, the other, uh, the other two things I have here in my notes, um, hotspot sourcing, um, we are able to, um, to identify, um, both an effective and, and, and cost um, attractive way to source additional hotspots. We we're able to benchmark both the count of hotspots as well as Roku and other streaming devices for our pure set. Um, so we have metrics around that. You know, the numbers are uh, you know, one to two dozen is what they feel is meeting adequate demand based on their, their, their um, patrons. Um, I know there were some programming ideas that came out of these meetings as well that the team is running with. Um, and also some additional insights into how, if we want to continue um, to offer Roku's or to add Roku's to our, our um, circulation, you know, how we might think about that in terms of what is on it in terms of the streaming devices and whether we have Roku specific to a certain streaming service, whatever it may be, Hulu, what have you, because the risk is if you have all those services on one device, it might obfuscate your real circulation number because they might, you know, what, what otherwise might have been, hey, I use Hulu for this and I use mm -hmm. Apple Music for that and I use, you know, whatever else is on the, on the Roku. Um, that would only be one circ number. Whereas if you had individual devices, there would be, you know, potentially individual circulations for each of those services. So that's just something we want to consider and, um, you know, as we, as we contemplate, um, adding or, or modifying our circulation numbers around those. Indeed, uh, in, in terms of the, the wireless hotspots, uh, Jillian has done some really good work uh, studying the options on those and putting together a proposal that we'll be taking to the friends. Not at their meeting later this week, um, which will be dominated by other topics, but um, at a meeting we're hoping that they'll schedule for us here in May. So those should be one of the sooner rather than later um, opportunities. There's a lot of good opportunities to uh, get financial support for those. Um, and the, the, the rest that we're gonna be working with uh, the friends on. 
The other thing I would add too, it just somewhat anecdotally is the, the or as an aside, is the Stroh reading room could not be coming at a, at a better time for us because my, you know, what really jumped out at me in looking at these libraries that I canvassed with the team, as well as the, the ones that, that um, Bonnie and Bill and, and Eric have submitted is the plethora of different meeting room availabilities at um, our competitive set. Now, granted, they're they're blessed with a much bigger real estate footprint than we are, but you know, from you know, middle school specific or high school specific uh, rooms, you know, during the course of the of the of the of the non school day, so that high school students have a place to go, or elementary school students, um, other breakout rooms. You know, we we are at a, a certain uh, certainly a, a deficit relative to our competitive set there, but you know, we're, we're handcuffed at the same time by the amount of room we have. So uh, it was it was kind of refreshing to me to see that you know we're, we're we're building this reading room at the same time that you know we're looking at other these competitive libraries they have so many reading rooms available so at least to some extent we're keeping pace there. Indeed, good progress to be made. I'm really glad to hear you're taking um, observations and feeding questions into the upcoming survey. I think that's a great way to share what you're seeing and then getting context of like love from how they feel about it. So that's terrific. Okay. Um, any of the other committees that did not meet, uh, anything that anyone would like to uh, report? Okay, not hearing anything, anything else. Uh, I will move us then to our one uh, item well, of new you know, business Eric, for today. Oh, yes. If I could just, I just want to say next month being May is mm -hmm. the start of our new year. And um, it's an opportunity to uh, decide what committees you would like to serve on. Um, you are not required to be on any particular committee for the rest of your tenure on the board. Um, we. It's very flexible moving around in, in May if you wish to. You can certainly stay where you are or if you want to try out a different board or flip or whatever, feel free to do that. Um, that's, that's just a really good time to take that opportunity. So, I'm sorry, Eric, I didn't mean to interrupt there, but I want to remember that. Not a problem. Um, so now, new business. Um, the one item of new business that I have for you this evening is the renewal of our uh, local area network maintenance contract with CBI. So we had initially going into this fiscal year been looking to um, go out to bid uh, for uh, land maintenance uh, for that contract, not because we're under any requirement to do so, we are not, uh, but um, because, you know, we haven't in a bit and getting out things out to bid uh, periodically is, um, you know, how you make sure that uh, you're getting the uh, best service uh, for the best price uh, for the community. Um, we did have some changeover that um, got in the way of that a little bit when uh, Lindy, who was our um, really manager of building facilities as well as technology, uh, retired mid-year though. Uh, wonderfully, she's been doing a lot of volunteering in the area, so we see her all the time, which is fantastic. Um, but that's beside the point. Uh, I see her more now so, that she's retired than before. <laughs> she's on about more. <laughs> yeah. She's, she's not back in any office. Um, so, yeah. But um, that, that ended up uh, cr creating a, a spell of time here where we've been kind of in transition with those responsibilities. Um, I've been taking on some, we've been looking at getting, um, you know, additional, um, leading more on others uh, for some of the building uh, services and uh, potentially bringing in more outside contract expertise uh, to, to help us in our decision-making and evaluation on some of those. Um, all of which is a long way of saying that uh, we ran short on time to get this out to bid um, because we were making that transition. Um, I still think that's worthwhile. I still think it's worth doing. In the meantime, our contract is up uh, here at the end of April and 
looking at the prospect of continuing service with CDI, they do continue to provide uh, good service. Uh, we did have a service that we were not, that they provided uh, for the first time to us last year that we ended up not using much. Um, so that being the case that was dropped uh, from the contract proposal this year uh, with the net result that um, we looked at too many tabs. Um, that the current year contract is for 14,240, but the proposed contract for next fiscal year is actually a little bit less at 14,000 um, due to that drop service. So some what of the service, sir? Um, dark web monitor monitoring. Oh, right, right, yeah, okay. Uh, and it wasn't it wasn't so much because it wasn't a valuable service so much as um, there wasn't much we could do with the reports. Um, you know, a, a lot of it came down to uh, just being certain that everybody you know was changing their their passwords on a, a regular basis. And other than that, there just wasn't much that could be done. Um, you know, if if somebody's email would show up on the dark web, then, you know, better be sure to change the password. But that was really all that it came down to as far as anything that was actionable. Um, so ultimately, in evaluating the, the worth of the service, um, you know, really, it just kind of came down to emphasizing that value as far as good habits by staff, uh, which I think we um, have in spades, in terms of safety and security with the techn technology that we have. And that's pretty much the outcome that the dark web monitoring was encouraging anyway. Um, you know, if we could go out there and we could like get ourselves off of some of databases or something, I think that would be, that would be different. That would be nice. That would be useful, but um, not so much. Just letting us know that bad things are happening out there was kind of what it came down to. So um, then looking at the contract, uh, I had uh, hoped to run that past the, the technology committee um, at the, the meeting uh, this past work, this past week, um, not having a chance to do that. I did send it out to the entire committee uh, to provide a, a chance for uh, feedback. Um, responses from the committee members were, uh, were positive towards um, you know, renewing this for another year. And uh, you know, that, being, that being the case, I'm um, even more comfortable in uh, bringing a recommendation to the uh, board this evening that we go ahead and uh, renew this agreement. Eric, are you any looking questions? for a motion or? If no one has any questions, I am looking for a motion. All motion to approve. I'll second. Okay. All right, and we'll do a roll call since it's a uh, contract beyond my sign limit of 5,000. Uh, Trustee Hayes. Excuse me, Eric, shouldn't the motion include the amount? Yes. Yes. Good. I, I, I have it. Being part of the tech committee, I read the email, provided my feedback. So renewing the CBI land maintenance contract for a fiscal year 22 23 in the amount of $14,000. Yes. Um, Bill, I think you were muted there. So, um, yes, I. Trustee Graziano. I. Trustee Shaw. I. Trustee Meyerhoff. I. Trustee Zaudi. I. Contract is approved. Thank you all very much. All Eric, right. Quick that, question. We're not, and I, I don't question the prudence in, in you know, going out and, and, and putting this out there, but um, just in the interest of scarce resources, it, it, I mean, do we, CVI has been a, been a great partner to us. Um, you know, my experience with them uh, recently was was outstanding. I thought they were, they were very um, helpful and, and very proactive in, in answering questions. And of all the other libraries we talked to, I didn't hear any other vendor but CVI that anyone is using. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know if it's 
just food for thought if it's even worth putting that out to bid or we focus you know on other tags yeah it's 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 one that we were we are definitely putting out out of a sense of responsibility uh, okay. rather than any need to um, like feeling that we could do better um, the you know we do keep our ear uh, our ears to the ground um, you know in 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 terms of other possible vendors that are coming in. Um, who might be options or provide opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, there, there hasn't really been anybody that um, has come across our radar that would be a challenge. And obviously, as you, as you noticed in the, in the, in the visits, uh, they do a lot of business with the uh, libraries here on the North Shore. Um, and there, there's reasons for that. They, they specialize in uh, ways that are beneficial to libraries. They're very familiar with library uh, land architecture and library needs. Um, and all of that experience usually means that their price is significantly better than um, the other bidders that we get when we have gone out to bid in the past. Okay. So it's, it's not one responsibly. We should, we should get it out there at some point um, Got it. In the next year or two, but uh, it's definitely not one that we're in a rush. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay, I think that takes us, um, Melissa, to um, your report uh, for the update on the, the building and campaign. Hi, everybody. Can you hear me? Yep. Great. Hey, Melissa. Great. Um, so this Saturday um, marks a opportunity to move forward um, with the friends. Kathy, Jillian, Eric, and I will join the friends at their meeting on Saturday morning to talk to them about collaborating with the foundation, in fact, merging and becoming one entity as we move forward as a fundraising operation for the library. Um, this has taken a lot of thought and a lot of focus. So it's very exciting that this is finally getting a little bit of momentum. Um, we've been talking with the friends. They've had an opportunity to respond to our initial ideas. It was mostly positive, but they do have um, some concerns about how things might work. Uh, we will talk to the whole group. We, heretofore, we've only been talking with um, the executive members of the friends, four executive members. On Saturday, we'll have an opportunity to present to the entire group. Um, and then hopefully soon to follow, there will, there will be a vote and uh, we can get started on our partnership. I'm cautiously optimistic. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't work out that way, the foundation will have to um, regroup and we will pivot and figure out where we go from there. That's the update from the foundation. Um, Eric, do you want to add anything else? Or Kathy, do you want to add anything? Well, I can, I can provide a quick update. Oh, sorry. No, I, go ahead. I can provide a quick update from the, on the um, uh, potential with the PNC Bank, uh, former PNC Bank building. Uh, so over the last month, uh, that discussion has continued. Um, we've uh, been in communication um, with uh, museum and village on the possibilities, and that is continuing. So hope to have more concrete details for you at uh, a future meeting, but um, I will simply say things are good. Things are going well so far. Yeah. So long way to go, but things are flipping along. Um, and it's nice to have um, you know, with the closer collaboration with the friends and with the discussions with the museum to have um, a couple threads going at the same time here that are some really exciting possibilities. Yeah, a lot of enthusiasm. So, well, I'm a part of the library anyway. <laughs> so, um, but a lot of good uh, opportunities for partnership in the community, which is always positive. People get excited about that. That's yep. a good thing. 
Okay. Um, Melissa, anything else to add? Otherwise, I'm going to jump into director's report. I don't have anything else to add, but I hope next month I'll have I'll have much to add. <laughs> we're all we're all pulling for it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, director's report. Uh, couple items uh, to add uh, to the report here. Um, I am excited to report that the plants uh, for the garden that we had started indoors under a grow light uh, down on youth services, uh, that the plants are up and growing. So swing by and take a look, uh, say hello, uh, if you get a chance. Uh, and I do also want to call out uh, the circulation uh, for March, 2022. Um, I had to work with Anna to dig up some of the, the older numbers um, since we actually needed to really look back to 2019 in the before times for a comparative number since March was weird in both 2020 and 2021. Um, so our circulation total for uh, 2022 uh, this past month was 8,934. Uh, we had 8,387 checkouts uh, back in March 2019. So um, we are um, noticeably up um, versus the last uh, quote unquote normal month we had in the before times uh, for March. So I am uh, looking forward here. Uh, we're probably just a couple months away from the point where uh, we can um, start really having a valid comparison to um, the month, same month the previous year which will be very exciting. So um, last point that I wanna add uh, was a um, discussion that, um, something came out of a discussion that was had among village administrators and it's still very early um, days, but uh, we are looking at potentially digging into the possibility of a village-wide uh, long range strategic plan, uh, a planning process that would involve um, all of the uh, major um, stakeholders, the, the parks, the library, the village, uh, um, the schools, and um, you know, involve all of those in a strategic plan that would be um, at the high level focus on uh, you know, pulling all uh, of the resources of the those different entities together, uh, working for the community and setting uh, those collaborative goals, and then would also provide the opportunity to um, break out um, goals that all tied in uh, with the individual entities. So um, still very early uh, on with that, but um, it does um, seem to me is to, to be something that could have a lot of possibility. Um, I'm very excited to see if uh, we're able to uh, move that forward. So, um, any questions on anything in Bonnie? Yeah, um, just your your comment uh, about the long range planning made me curious about the status of the streetscape renovations. Uh, you know, we, you had shared a plan. I, I forget if it was the whole board or just the building and grounds committee. You provided a ton of feedback. Do you know what's next and when? Um, my understanding is that uh, the, the project continues to be on hold until such time as the village hears that they got the grant that they applied for. Ah. Yeah, yeah. Which... I could Sorry, Eric. I, I, I spoke to uh, Regis last week and I asked him almost the same question. And, and that's, that was his exact, you know, until we get the money, everything's on hold. Yeah. yeah were they um, rushing those plans in an effort to uh, apply for the, the uh, grant by a certain date? So they yep. kind of got in at the last minute on that. So um, Okay, so Bonnie, you may have to wait for your Ad Adirondack chairs. <laughs> <laughs> the, we are taking down the tent, though. Fireplace. I'm yeah. looking forward to the fireplace. I was in a community <laughs> recently that had a fireplace. And I was like, oh, okay, so this is what it might 
be like in the future in Lake Bluff. <laughs> yep. So you said you take the Matt, they're taking down the tent? The tent is coming down, I think, the end of this month um, across from the brewery. Um, okay. I imagine Mike is going to have a tent for sale if we need a tent. But, <laughs> <laughs> but he, you know, they, they have skin in the game, too, because, you know, they've had a great outdoor seating area that seats hundreds that it's now going to go away. And their question is, why didn't we just, when we were doing this sidewalk renovation, take out the parallel parking and extend our sidewalk and then uh, give, you know, but anyway, it's not relevant for us. <laughs> yeah. You no, know, it's interesting. We were visiting Annapolis in September and um, we've been there several times and where we used to eat in, in cafes where we were then eating on the sidewalks um, of Annapolis, which is a tiny little community. And we just asked some of the shop owners how they worked that out with the city and the city charged the restaurants for the use of the parking spaces. So the restaurants were staying in business, keeping their businesses thriving, but the city, which had to accommodate parking in other ways, was making a, a nice sum of money from the intake within the community. So I thought that was kind of a creative twist on what to do with all that parking. Um, but I won't miss the, the tent. I, I enjoy seeing some space over there, so that's good. It's coming down. <clears throat> Okay. Well, you know, quick question. Do Bonnie and I need, do you need our signatures for the um, the I, computer or the uh, tech contract? The land contract. Land contract. I don't think so. Let me pull that up and just text us if you need us to come in tomorrow. Yeah. No, I, I think we're good, but if, uh, but if that um, authorized customer uh, representative um, with the approval of the board on the, the contract. Um, there shouldn't be any problem with me signing that. Okay. If they have any question related to that, I will give you a buzz. Thank you. All right. Uh, that takes us to the uh, final moments of the meeting then. Uh, do we have anything else that anyone would add uh, for business? Otherwise I would look for a motion to adjourn. I so move. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting, meeting is adjourned at 8, 11 p.m. Great. Good night, everyone. Thank you very much. Good night. Thank you very Bye. much. Bye. Take care. Bye now.